Today, we are going to be talking about Captain, and this stream in particular, we're going to make a two-parter. So today, we're just going to delve into Captain. We're going to see what is it, what does it allow you to do, um, and some use cases for it, things like that. Uh, that's today's stream. But before we jump into that, let me introduce my co-hosts, which if you watch our stream, you all know we have Sam Delamarter right below me. And below Sam, we have Dan McCracken. And I'm just going to say, Dan McCracken is jumping through hoops to be here today. He's also on mute, is what Slab is saying. <laughs> You're not. I think I know. I think I know. Man, I cannot win. He, uh, speak. Man. I think you're good now. I think you're good now. Slab? No. Oh, <laughs> now we have the best equipment possible, but our work center is rusty. Now they can't even hear that. Uh -huh. They can't hear. Ooh, they can hear you now. Slab is the, the sexiest man on the planet. You know, the, the issue the issue here is that there's just so many buttons to click. And you're right. The work center is not fully defined with the streaming setup. We have a lot of tools. We have some good software. We're smart people, but we do not have the experience. And that's the key. Anyway, uh, I was jumping through hoops. And remember how awesome I was? Uh, I, have a, I live out in the country. I have a generator. Everything's on backup power, as promised. When we moved it here, Makita's like, oh, man, I don't know. You're gonna... The website. website was up in 20 minutes. You should have seen me. I wasn't even talking to my wife. I was just like, I got to get it going. Got to get it on. We're all set. And you did it. <clears throat> Perfect. It's going to be a great stream. Okay. Uh, also, uh, if you notice, uh, Sam has some new lighting, so he looks healthy. He looks great. Very excited. The before and after. <laughs> The before Ready? and oh yeah, do it. Boom! Before. Wait for the stream to catch up. And now. Much it's a big the before, difference. The, bef the before is like he's about to tell spooky stories around a campfire. Uh huh. It's just mood lighting. That's all it is. The before is like Scotty's lighting from before. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a serial killer. It's very true. Might be. Very true. Okay, uh, so let's jump into Captain here. Let's start the conversation. And let's start the conversation um, with something that I think we've talked about before. Maybe. We might be jumping the gun with this, actually. Uh, Captain works great when you already have a deployment tool implemented. Uh, specifically, Argo. Argo CD is a very popular uh, GitOps deployment tool. I can't remember. Did we do a stream on Argo? I don't think we have. And and I I don't know what Captain is. 
I when you mentioned it the other day, I looked at this real quick and I did see that it works with Argo, which is great because I know what Argo does. But yeah, can you give the the 10 second pitch of what is Captain? Because if it's not doing the deployments and automation, what what does Captain give us and why do I want it? I love it. So let's uh, I'm going to give a I'm going to give a story here. I'm going to give a, a white paper story. So um, we are currently implementing Argo CD at a large client of ours, and it's going mm. well. Um, Argo CD is great at GitOps. It's great at, hey, I want to roll out this image, this container, this Helm chart to this environment. And you can create some complex configs that make it go to like 10 environments at the same time and you can keep them in sync and versions. A lot of power, a lot of power. Now, what Argo does not have, and this is where Captain comes into, into play here. Captain, or sorry, Argo, sorry. Whew. Argo does not have any workflow mechanism. It does not have any way to uh, have approvals so if you want a, a, a product owner, not an IT person, but a product owner as a part of the business to sign off on whether a new version of the app can be released, um, Argo can't do that unless you uh, do it through like a pull requests or things like this. Um, also, it does not provide stage gates. So something that Captain allows you to do is say, hey, I'm going to deploy this to this environment. And then once it's there, I'm going to run some tests to make sure that it's up and running. And then once I know it's up and running, I'm going to run some smoke tests or I'm going to run some integration tests to validate functionality. And if those tests fail, it'll automatically roll back to the previous version. Things like this. But also what I'm talking about right now uh, is what we're going to dig into today. Okay, that's cool. So hearing that, the one thing that I'm going to look for is differences between what Captain can do and what... I think you could use the other Argo products for like, does Captain really give me more? And maybe it's just ease out of box because I was watching a Dev DevOps toolkit uh, video this morning on just automating everything with Argo. And so Argo workflows, Argo events, and I mean, Argo workflow itself, you can just create a container that does whatever you want. But obviously if this has built in, you know, click yes and it deploys or whatever, then that's probably worth. McCracken chime in. Yeah. Um, as it turns out, my, my take on a lot of exactly where you're at, my take has been, as I've learned more, you could do any of these workflows with any of these tools. Okay. You could make the, all of these are square holes and square pegs or whatever. I'm bad at analogy or uh, whatever you call those things. Um, but which one is best for your business is really the question. Which one's best for your use case and how much user experience, how much does user experience matter? I think that that matters a lot. Um, my, my gut on and hope of what captain will do or will show us is that it's really nice for clicky clicky. It's really nice for business user or system analyst, non-developer, let's say. Um, it's my hope. And it, it looks great. Just, uh, you know, this one, we're going to get into it. Um, I've not really do, do, uh, not really looked at it either. That's why we're doing the stream. Go figure. Yeah, and but, I mean... Uh, that's my yeah. response to you. Yeah. That's a huge value add. Yeah. If it can do all those things, for sure. But there's probably a lot of Venn diagram overlap. I, I imagine that there probably is. Yeah. So let's take a look at it. So I got the website up here. Um, I'm just going to take a look at the main page here first. Observability dashboards alerting. Sounds great. They have some good uh, marketing here. SLO driven multi-stage delivery. And I guess what I want to look at, I, I'm, I'm going over the webpage. I just want to see what they have here. But I, what I want to do is I kind of want to play with their live demo. I almost want to start with that. What do you mm -hmm. guys think? 
do it. All right. Operations by closed loop remediation. Captain offers a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of people use it. Okay. <clears throat> live demo. Explore the live demo. Okay. I think my eyes just went super wide because I don't know what I'm looking at here. Choose a project. Okay, so we have some projects to choose from. Litmus, explore, uh, explore this project that orchestrates load tests along with chaos experiments to evaluate the resilience of applications. Okay. Oh, Podtato Head. Explore the two-stage demo with the CNCF Podtato Head application that has been onboarded. The application is deployed twice per day with one fast and one slower build. Explore how the Keptin quality gates prevent the slower run to reach production based on data from Prometheus. That's the one that I want to look at. Uh, there's also Sock Shop, our famous Sock, sock Shop application with a three-stage environment and quality gates using data from Dynatrace. Each day three, each day three builds try to make it into production, but only two versions are stable enough to pass the quality gates. You can set up this demo yourself by following the blah, blah, blah. I think Potato Head and Sock Shop are the ones that would be the most interesting. What do you guys think? I'm massively interested in the Potato because I saw something else at KubeCon. I think I might have mentioned that or in our one of our things. So I'm kind of interested in learning about that too. I've not All done right. it yet. Pod Tato. I am looking at Pod Tato hardening. Okay, let's do it. Okay, there's a little hover thing here. Evaluation of test on hardening. Don't know what I'm looking at. Services. Hello, service. Uh -huh. one or 0 0.1.1 okay so it's bringing up this thing over here started at 802 today it finished the release there's a little pop out here oh the pop out service actually takes you to the service mm -hmm. okay here's an evaluation thing if you click on hardening I kind of wanted to see the uh, pipeline thing first. This is like getting too deep. This is going deeper than I want to go right now. Are those the environments, the hardening environment and the other one? Calls oh, those are stage. So those are kind of environments. Maybe. Environment. So there's an environment tab. One is called hardening. And one is called production. Both have zero problems right now. That's good. Uh, I'm going to switch to Sock Shop. Because one of these was supposed to not work. There the dev environment. Good. One problem open. Cards. It's got a connectivity problem. No pending deployments for this stage available. And then staging.
sequences. So there's a bunch of services. Those are probably our apps, right? Mm hmm. That's really interesting. That could be a big list. Um, stages look like somewhat environments, but you could have a dev stage that deploys to a dev environment. The sequences, delivery sequence and a remediation sequence. Yeah, check out the the failed. One of the failed ones. And then like click on this. Yeah, click on the staging 33. If you kind of keep drilling in, I think it will tell us like what quality oh. gate failed to mark that as failed. So you, yeah, see so evaluation. Can we keep going? I didn't go further just on my own. Lighthouse service failed. Event payload. Yeah, what's that guy do? Dude, it's pretty cool. Result failed. Score 33%. From Dynatrace. Right. So, I mean, it's if it's doing what I think it's doing, you know, it's very cool that it's it's reading the metrics of the performance itself. But what I want to know, is it just measuring traffic? It, like, you know, the performance could definitely depend on the traffic. So is it initiating some sort of load test? Or health check right. or something else. Now, you, you saw Dynatrace. Um, I remember we were talking about this earlier. Somebody was. This is a spinoff from uh, Dynatrace, the vendor. It's an open source uh, situation from them, which is great. Um, so I'm not surprised to see that there. I wonder why it's not just plugged into the Kubernetes health check, though. Well, it might be. Well, on top of that, you might want to know, you know, just because your app is up. If I wrote some really bad, un, you know, not performance SQL, then I would want to know that, hey, you know, the version previous was running, you know, sub second, but now, you know, for these parameters, you know, it's taking five seconds. We don't want to release mm. that. That That's what I am hearing that it could do, hoping it can do. So I'm looking yeah. at the Podtato head one, which the Podtato head one comes from Prometheus, not Dynatrace. Um, I lost it. I lost it. Where'd it go? There was a button right here that said S show slow. The heck? She gone. I saw it too. There it is. Show slow. So it's the same point that he just made. The SLO is defined as the HTTP response time in seconds from the main page needs to be less than one. <laughs> and if it's uh -huh. less than or equal to 0. 0.5, then it's a warning. Then it's a w warning. That seems backwards, right? That does response seem backwards time. to me. Uh, well, maybe it's maybe it it will allow it through if it's less than one, but it's going to let you know. Mm, yeah, why would it? If it's less than right. five. So, right, I expect like one and a half. But I guess the pass is one, so maybe you do want the you want the warning at a half, between a half and one second. Hey, give me a warning. Let me know it it might be slowing down compared to the last release. But if it gets past one, then fail it. Correct. Still, uh, so you can define an SLO here. I, I kind of wanted to see, like, the sequences. So, hello service in hardening 
and production. So here's the sequence. Hardening. Production. Mm -hmm. Delivery. Deployment. Helm service finished with the result of pass. Successfully deployed. Release. Helm service started. Helm service finished. I mean, is this, what is, what am I looking at here? Is this the sequence? Is this like the f Well, deployment? it seems like those are like instances of whatever pipeline. And it's saying like, well, did it, did it deploy and pass the SLO in hardening? Cool. Shipped broad. That's, yeah, that's, that's the I gate, right? It. Yeah. Right. And like when we were looking at one of the other ones that, you know, there were slightly more complex. I'm going to go back to the website. Yeah, I think we might be ready. Actually, just walk through. Why, Captain? Um... I'm trying to find, like, because we're on stream, I don't want to just read the website. So I'm trying to find, I don't know, something that. Concepts. Yeah, uh, I mean, we're going to have to read a little bit. Approvals that we talked about. Here we where, go. You know, where's a manual approval gate or something? Multi-stage delivery, quality gates, performance verification. We could just jump into architecture. Uh, that's how it works. Yeah, I don't really care about that. Let's start as a with user. declarative multi-stage delivery. Let's start with that. Okay. Captain allows for declaratively defining multi-stage delivery workflows by defining what needs to be done, how to achieve it. Okay. Shipyard for delivery declaration. The definition is manifested in a so-called shipyard file that defines a task sequence for delivery. It can hold multiple stages, each with a dedicated deployment strategy, test strategy, as well as a remediation strategy. Following this declarative approach, there is no need to write imperative pipeline code. Captain takes the shipyard file and creates a multi-stage workflow, each stage having a deployment strategy, either blue-green, a testing strategy, and an optional automated remediation strategy for triggering self-healing actions. Okay, please take a look at an example of a multi-stage delivery with a dev, hardening, and production stage with blue-green deployment and automated problem remediation. Okay, so there is a YAML file. It has a section called stages. And then there are three stages, one called dev, one called hardening, one called production. The deployment strategy is a string and all it says is direct. So just deploy whatever it is, don't care about it. Cause the next one oh. says blue green. Well, those strategies are defined somewhere. Right. So those okay. are just Agreed. like, <clears throat> okay, so here, this picture is good. This is a good picture. Progressive delivery window. Start at dev. Captain quality gate. Hardening. Another quality gate. Then production. Um, that's really interesting. We were looking, or sorry, one of the things that we're, one of the features of this that we're hoping to find, and I believe we know for sure is in there, is part of the quality gates. One of the options is a uh, manual. Right. Manual button click quality gate. Which you hate to see, but in reality, there's a lot of, in reality, you start somewhere. 
reality isn't greenfield all the time and uh you know kubecon demos actually kubecon this year was really i thought quite gritty and real i heard a lot of real stuff there not not all fluffy uh demo -y stuff um to be uh, to give them some credit haha -ha, thanks sam <laughs> what <laughs> yes we threw the stream together a little last minute but uh i still think this is good we're gonna have to go through this process anyways no for sure and i and not to knock that it's just for certain things especially ones that it's not as easy as just like you know helm install <laughs> like we don't we don't even know where to start kind of so just stumbling through it you know might seem a little more awkward but to your point yeah you got to do it at some point um so i let's let's keep going um i i'm kind of feeling the whole um you know we, we were talking about this then we started talking about quality gates um so i found a link to quality gates so why don't we just keep following our train of thought here and let's let's look at what quality gates gets us Um, kept in quality gate process. I'm going to read, I'm going to read a little bit. Um, kept in quality gates based on the con base. Okay. PR, we got to PR this, uh, grammar kept in quality gates based on the concepts of service level indicators and service level objectives. Therefore it is possible to declaratively Describe the desired quality objective for your applications and services. So number one, the process of evaluating a quality gate can be triggered either via the Captain CLI or the Captain API. Once triggered, Captain fetches the SLIs from a data provider like Prometheus or Dynatrace. Captain evaluates the SLI against the SLO that are defined for the application or service. After evaluation and scoring, Captain returns the result that can be either processed in an automated way by an existing CD pipeline or by the user to manually decide the next steps. Excellent. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, okay, so let me, I, I know I just read that and talked for a little bit, but I want to give my quick thoughts and I want to hear your guys' th thoughts on it. You know, we're trying to, we're, our goal right now is to implement this product with a customer. And obviously we're learning as we go. Um, I think that's very clear from the stream, but our customer writes some integration tests and writes some smoke tests and they run those right now. And we run them using um, Jenkins or we run them manually. This reading this has me thinking that that is going to have to change dramatically, especially the captain fetches the SLIs from a data provider and then evaluates those against the SLOs. Let's, uh, just, what are the data provider options? Because my, my gut is that uh, Jenkins is a data provider. Uh, maybe. Okay. It has Uh, Dynatrace and Prometheus are provided, uh, but they also have a create your own custom SLI provider here. Hmm. Well, right. And so that's why, you know, I kind of wondered about, gotcha. you know, both of those tools are going to be a way of, you know, analyzing the, the metrics, but yep. is there something right. that is driving traffic or is this just, you know, we deployed it it should be getting whatever traffic dev test or you know staging gets and you know based on that whereas like what we currently have right is somebody or as a part of the build or deploy process you know those tests get run or we can run them manually but i haven't seen yet where captain is going to kick off something it's just going to um, yeah i agree the build or deploy and then fetch some results at some point but it's like it needs to be out there for a certain amount of time to 
get reliable metrics. I don't know. So there is uh, in the Captain Sandbox GitHub repo, there is a tutorial for integrating Jenkins with your SLIs and SLOs. So, yeah, I'm not digging into that right now, but that does exist. Yep, it is a thing. Huh. Yeah, because I, I, I definitely feel like the SLIs are, you know, service level metrics, low level stuff, not like a, a zero one. A Jenkins job passed doesn't feel like it's that, right. which is fine, I think. Um, so let's go back to what Sam was talking about, because I, I definitely agree. So in this picture that we were looking at with the arrow moving through the um, the multi-stage delivery here, we have dev, a quality gate, and then hardening. And dev is surrounded by a blue box and has a arrow pointing to it that says functional tests. Yeah. So what what is that? Right. <clears throat> right, and it is the way the diagram is currently. It makes me think that that's something outside of Captain itself. Triggers functional tests in the dev stage. Oh, I see it. I see. Okay, so back in the YAML, uh, there's a test strategy, and it says functional. And then the next one. The test strategy says performance, so these are defined somewhere. Cool. Um, yeah, can we get like the docs on that YAML? Uh, yes, I already have it up. It's right here. Dang, man, you're so good. I try. Sam is uh, a really bad liar. <laughs> <laughs> kind of just cuts. So where can we define a testing strategy? Yeah, let me, uh, let's do a mm -hmm. search. Mm -hmm. Let's do, uh, do, 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 do. Why don't they have a search on here? Yeah, feels like you need a search there. Uh, quality gates. So something I was going to point out is this is 0 0.10.0, right? Like, that's yeah, so the 10th release out. no yeah, of their zero uh zero release we pay good money for this product sam uh-huh and they fixed <laughs> they've done 10 bug fixes it's great no there's a lot of point releases he's he's just being a small brain about it um don't worry i'm just trolling that. but like how like how developed is it we're gonna find out very okay three years old <laughs> i think argo is younger than that feels like it Okay, multi-stage delivery under continuous delivery. Oh, wow, that's changed a lot. I'm just looking for the whole testing strategy thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like where, where do we create the test strategy? Testing strategy, functional. Okay. Simple shipyard file with... Nope. Extended shipyard with three stages. Yes, I. you're giving me examples. I love that. 
but I want to know how to define these strings that you're putting in this file. Try, um, cause we have to be able to create one of these testing strategy objects, tutorials, reference, cause it's not a quality gate. The quality gates, the thing that comes after the thing, I think. Okay. Performance testing as a self-service. Welcome to Captain Tutorials. Full Captain installation on a Kubernetes cluster. GKE recommended. Captain in a box with micro Kubernetes. What happens if I hit start? It's a bash script that will convert a plain Ubuntu machine in a single node cluster. Uh, I'm not in a position to run this on my Windows machine. I mean, I think by next week, maybe we can have some of the prereqs set up. Um, and, you know, we can create a GKE cluster you know, to do a full tour. Um, but, yeah, doing that live in the next mm. 15 minutes, probably not. See, this is... This page right here, I have come to Captain many, many times over the last year, literally after the, over the last whole year, maybe even more. And I always stop because their tutorials are so heavy handed, to be honest. I mean, look at these. Every single one requires you to set up a Kubernetes cluster. And I just want to, you know, get a feel for it. That's all, that's all I want right now. I don't, I don't want to set up a Kubernetes cluster. I mean, I have a Kubernetes cluster that we could use, but I'm not in a position to do that right now. <laughs> Power's on. Hey, congratulations. Well, I haven't left my desk to go turn the power on, but it is on. Okay. Where should we go from here? I'm kind of feeling, my gut feeling right now is that we're looking at these docs and they keep kind of taking us in a circle. Um, I have something. Okay. Uh, a, br a brilliant gentleman in the chat did give us a a nice little link. I just followed it. It's not a troll. Although he is known to troll. Um, are, you at, are you at a place where you can click the chat? Yes, I am. It's kind of, it's kind of good. Uh, I, cause I think these test these testing thingies are sequences, right? Our test strategy is a, is just a sequence. Is a named sequence? I think so. Huh? Got a couple, uh, cloud native journeymen in the chat. Maybe they can help. a lot of action here because I, I mean what i'm looking for and i think this is what makita's looking for is like where do i set up my test Can I, where do i point it at the thing and ask it to run this payload against the service to tell me that everything's okay or whatever whatever that may be right all their examples so far are just go fetch a metric from prometheus or dynatrace right and that that might be great as a quality gate. Cause I mean, that's literally look, the quality of your service hasn't degraded. Like you're at, I'm still at this level of thinking where I, I just need it to work. Is it working? Can I get good at knowing if it's working and what captain's already solving for is what I want to get to with my customers and in, in my business, has it degraded one tenth of a second on the response time? Like, let me know that that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, um, you know what? The 
the testing thing is not a sequence. Okay. It is uh, a, okay, so it is a task. And a sequence is made up of a list of tasks. And a stage is made up of a list of sequences. So it goes stage, sequence, task. Gotcha. So I guess my question is then, how do you define a task? It says a sequence consists of a list of tasks whereby a single task is the smallest executable unit. Okay. Wait time that yeah task properties are individual key value pairs properly they're consumed by the unit that executes the task. So what's the unit that executes the task? The sequence. Sequence. A stage consists of a list of sequences whereby a sequence is an ordered list of tasks that are triggered sequentially. A sequence has the properties name, tasks, triggered on. Yeah, you know, there there really might be, we should keep, we'll keep going on this. There really might be a place in the, uh, or a gap here, just in the, the the language where what we're trying to do just hasn't been articulated very, very well yet, or for this type of use case, for where we're coming from. In theory, we're a target market. Sorry, Captain People. I so, yeah, and maybe that gets back to, like, where we started the stream. Like, what is Captain supposed to do? It works with Argo CD. So what, you know, where is the boundary of what Captain does and what, you know, your deployment pipeline would do? Great question. So actually, that's a maybe that would answer our questions, actually. Um, so let me type in um, it Captain. It kind of feels like maybe we're Argo looking CD. at Captain to do something that it might not do. I don't know. OK, so it's one of their tutorials. Argo CD for deploying and Captain for testing, evaluating, and promoting. This, you know what? Actually, this will probably answer our questions. Let's take a look here real quick. Right. Because it seems like maybe Captain is only evaluating what's out there and then updating your Git ops workflow, you know, based on those test evaluations. And then Argo CD would see that, hey, you know, Captain just updated to say this next version go to staging whatever let's try this real quick install the captain argo service the captain argo service takes care of promoting or aborting a rollout depending on the result of the quality gate okay so this sounds like it's a uh, a plugin for captain more pre precisely, the Argo service listens for this guy, these types of events, and depending on the evaluation result, whether the quality gate is passed or not, the service promotes or aborts a rollout, respectively. Fascinating. So it looks like there's a service that's running inside of Kubernetes that we deploy. And it's monitoring Kubernetes events. And anytime an event comes through with this um, signature, it will take action. All right. 
let's just keep going here. So create the project sock shop. So they have the YAML file. They've defined a stage called production with a blue green service deployment strategy and a test strategy of performance. Um, they're creating it using the captain CLI. Okay, next. Create the carts service. Captain manages all service related artifacts <clears throat> in a so called service. Create a service for carts using the create service command. After creating the service, Captain allows to add service related artifacts like the performance test. Ooh. Captain add resource. The project is sock shop. The stage is production. The service is carts. The resource is jmeter slash load.jmx. And the resource URI is also jmeter slash load.jmx. This could be really good. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm open and curious. I'm wondering if this notation is important in that it's jmeter slash and then the file. So I'm wondering if this jmeter part tells it what type of thing it is. And maybe there's a plugin or native functionality that knows what jmeter or how to run a jmeter file. And then the second half is the file you want it to run. I feel like it might just be the, the, uh, the file path of the relative file path of that command, but I'm with you. It's just a JMeter file. Cause this is like a cube cuddle. This is a CLI command, right? Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. We've got slab in the chat. I'm not familiar with shipyard, but it looks like you define a shipyard file at the project level. From there, you define the sequences and tasks for those sequences and Captain has a reserve set of tasks you can use. Test being one of them, or you can define your own. Not sure how you define your own yet. Ooh. Big brain. Test defines the test strategy used to validate a deployment. Captain supports tests of type functional and performance. Okay, so they're predefined. What are you giggling about? Nothing. Nice couch. <laughs> My puppy has to be let out. Um, extended shipyard with functional tests and dev. Okay, let's keep going on this real quick. <clears throat> I think we're the stream's coming to a close because I think I think Slab is right. I think we need to like implement something here. Next time, part two, Captain. In the wild. In the wild. There he was. There I was. Bullets overhead. Sniper overwatch. Ramadi. Please don't kill me, Jacko. I mean, they're passing in this thing called SLO quality gates .yaml. I wish I could like look at that. It's probably in the GitHub. It's probably right. in the repo. Right. And did it give a link and a welcome, I assume? Probably in the tutorials, uh, primary repo, their examples repo. I thought it was a 0 0.10 slab. Come on, that's like two more minor releases. That's like that's a ton. Just kidding. Yeah, 1.0, it'll be nice. Even just since we started using Argo, they went from 2.0 to 2.1. Actually, I think we were on 1.8 
and then they went to two dot and it was just magically better and then 2.1 was just like get at me better so yeah i'm i'm expecting quite a bit of a uh, a nice journey here assuming there's good community involvement which is what we're trying to promote community involvement that's what we are okay so let's let's wrap this up i'm excited i think this has a lot of potential i think it is I think it has a pretty steep learning curve. I mean, as many of these cloud native tools that we've used, I think we struggled a little bit trying to understand how this all fits together. Would you agree? Yeah, I think some of that is like the branding and verbiage they chose that <laughs> just doesn't feel as natural as maybe some other products that we've used. <laughs> um, but yeah, and I mean, to McCracken's point, like this is an evolution piece. Like this isn't, you know, a, a day one type thing. Like evaluating metrics of your new release and making decisions off that, that's pretty advanced along your cloud native journey, right? Like you don't need that day one. Um, so I, I do think we, you know, it is an advanced thing. So I, I'm not surprised that out of the box it isn't. I don't know, super easy. Yeah, and I think if you're if you're greenfield and you're designing, you know, your app from the start, you you could you could definitely do this. But even then, you know, if I'm if I'm writing an app for the first time, man, I really don't care right now. You know, I just want to get the thing to work. I want it out there, and then, you know, part of the evolution, maybe before production production workload, if you're doing if you're if you've got money on the line, then you invest and. In, and you really hone it in and you, you tune some of these metrics and you spend energy there. But that's asking for a lot. That's asking for a lot right off the bat. Um, but I think I think there's a lot here, a lot to build on. I'm, I'm excited to see more. Yeah. So we're going to continue this. We're not going to let this one um, fall off. We're going to do part two next Wednesday. Um, that being said, I think as homework... For the three of us, we should watch a couple of YouTube vids, um, get up to speed, and then maybe actually trial it a little bit on the side so we have something a little bit more cohesive for the stream. Yeah. Um, so at minimum, watch at least one YouTube video on how this thing is supposed to work. I will do the same. And uh, for all our viewers out there, tune in next week for a hands-on captain implementation where we're going to take th their tool and we're going to provide you with clear and concise instructions on how to actually use it. <laughs> An ARM64. Or <laughs> GKE. So any closing thoughts or remarks before we uh, turn off the stream for the day? That sounds good. Looking forward. Yeah, to I already gave my closing remarks. Also, I uh, love the beanie. That's Thank I, you. I mean that. It's Brandon Boyd, nineteen ninety-seven. That's what I see when I see your face, and I like it. I mean, I mean I'm... it too. You know, people that don't know us might think I'm joking. I like it. I don't. I'm all my life. I've had the same haircut, and I am trying to grow out my hair. For the first time ever you know i mean you only live once so if, if you want to try something you might as well just do it right <laughs> better better now than later take it from me so okay thank you guys for showing up to the stream and uh we will see you next time on the cloud native coffee hour wednesday afternoons at 4 p.m Thank you for tuning in.